Okay, now it's time to create the initial database. Now it says here, make sure you have a database server up and running. On a brand new server, you're very unlikely to have a MySQL server running on it. So we need to install one. On your server, I'm on my server and I'm logged on as root. To double check, I don't have a MySQL server running. I can type service MySQL. I'm pressing tab and it's not actually filling in the letters even. So that's an indication there's nothing there. Status, enter, yeah, could not be found. So another thing you can do is just type MySQL and see what happens. It says can't connect to local MySQL server through socket. That's a pretty good indication that I don't have MySQL running on my server. So I'm going to install it. Okay, so sudo apt. Remember, sudo is optional. I use a lot of computers, so I always tend to just write sudo by habit, whether I need to or not. Do you want to continue? Yes. Okay, excellent. I should be able to just log straight onto that MySQL now. MySQL, there we go. I have the MySQL prompt. I'm just going to quit that because I'm not finished yet. Okay, check the status. Service MySQL status. There we go, active and running. So we have a MySQL server on our system. Okay, so I do have a MySQL server up and running. Okay, so let's continue. Now, I can just log on writing MySQL. I don't need to put in new root or p, but if I was using a different user, I should use that. But I'm just going to type in MySQL. Enter, I've logged on. Got to create a database called Zabbix with the character set UTF-8 that supports four byte characters. Okay, enter. Done. I need to create a specific user for Zabbix called Zabbix at localhost identified by password. That is the password that it will use. You can change that to something more complicated if you want, but I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. Okay, so remember that's the password I'm using for my Zabbix at localhost user. And my user is called Zabbix at localhost because I'm running the MySQL server local to the Zabbix server process on the same server. Enter. I need to grant all privileges on the Zabbix database to the Zabbix at localhost user. Okay, enter. And now quit. Enter. Okay, so that's good. Now, when we installed before, we installed the Zabbix SQL scripts also. We now have to run those scripts. So that's this line here. Zcat points to the script that we're going to run, and we're going to run it using our Zabbix user. So we'll need the password that we used just up here. So when I created the user, I used that password. Password. Okay, so right click, paste, enter. Enter password, B A S S W O R D. That's what I used when I created my Zabbix user. And you just got to wait 30 seconds for this to finish. Okay, done. Let's do some tests. So my SQL, I'm logging back on. Okay, show databases. Finish with a semicolon. Okay, so we have the default MySQL databases plus our new one called Zabbix. Let's use Zabbix. Right, database changed. Let's show the tables in Zabbix. Show tables. Enter. And these are all the tables that the Zabbix database has and will use. There's lots of them. We can do a simple query. So select all from users. And that's some information about our users in the Zabbix database. Very good. And quit. Quit. Excellent. The next thing is to tell our Zabbix configuration what the password is for our Zabbix user. So we're going to edit this file, etc Zabbix Zabbix server conf, clear. On Ubuntu, I use Nano, so Nano, etc Zabbix Zabbix server.conf. We just scroll down. DB name Zabbix, we're getting close. DB user Zabbix. DB password, let's uncomment that. The DB password for my Zabbix user was password. Control X to save that, press yes, enter, and that's done. Now we can start our Zabbix server process. So sudo service Zabbix server start, double check its status. 
and it says active running. So the server is now running. Control C to get out of that. Now if we restart our server that is running Zabbix server completely, Zabbix server might not be running when it's restarted so we can force it to be started automatically. So we can use system control, enable Zabbix server, Zabbix agent, Apache 2, all those things to auto start when the system reboots. Okay, so right click that and it pastes enter. Excellent.